Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Rickman, and welcome to a commentary video. That is set to the background of me digging in Minecraft, because honestly I have no idea how to have a fun background for these commentary videos. I figure having some games in the background will work, I will might shake it up as far as which games I'm using, but for now we'll stick with Minecraft, because that's a little more chill and relaxing and not as stressful. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about the old work-life balance, right? Now, some of you watching this might be too young to have a job yet, um, but even if you're just in school, you probably still know what I'm talking about. Uh, work-life balance is just how you split up your time between uh, your career, right? Uh, or in, if you're a student, like your school, your education, and your free time. Right, so how you kind of balance the two. Now, most of my analogies and references will be from the perspective of a teacher, since that's what I am and know and how I relate to the world, right? Uh, that said, I will try to generalize it, and hopefully it can be relatable in other fields and whatnot. So the reason that I am bringing this topic up is because, well... Um, it's, it's always been an issue in education um, and other careers, right? But especially last year, it really reared its ugly head. Teachers have sort of always had this expectation that the classroom isn't the only place where they should devote their time, right? Where you're almost sort of told that in order to be good at your job, you must be putting in extra hours after the school day is up. And a lot of jobs have those sorts of expectations, you know? At least the non-hourly ones, right? The salaried jobs are kind of what I'm talking about. They expect you to be exceptional. And so in order to be exceptional, you have to devote yourself to the career. You can't think of anything else but only your job, right? Um, and in teaching, this permeates, well, everything. Uh, I know I've talked about before how teachers aren't really supposed to take days off. It's a systemic idea that admin and parents have, sort of a mindset that uh, admin and parents now have, that teachers should always be in the classroom and should just never leave. Uh, if you take a sick day, you're ashamed for it. Or, oh goodness, if you decide you want to take a personal day for something fun or not emergency related, like, good lord, you get shamed so hard. And even if you happen to be lucky and your campus is nice and doesn't try to make you feel bad for taking time off, the system is just so convoluted as far as trying to acquire a substitute and requiring you to make sub plans and just preparing for all of that, that sometimes it's just easier to show up sick than to actually take time off. Um... And so that just creates a really unhealthy work-life balance because you just can't take the time off. You know, like I know I've done that where I've I've just shown up sick rather than actually do that. And that that's not healthy. Um, but this also comes up in other ways too, especially when you're first starting out or when you're training to be a teacher. You're sort of just told that you should expect to take extra time outside of the usual school day uh, for school-related things. You know, teachers are expected to take on different duties, um, things like cafeteria duty, hall duty, uh, maybe you have a car line you're supposed to watch, those sorts of things. Uh, you're supposed to host office hours or tutorials pretty much constantly. Um, you're expected to assist or run different clubs or activities, and then also to attend school events like pep rallies, sporting events, um, school dances, those sorts of things. And it is really hard to not think of that as the norm, especially when you're first starting out and you don't necessarily know the ropes of everything. It's hard not to be in that mindset. Uh, you know, like when I first started, my first three years of teaching, I, I bought into that. I was coming up to campus on the weekends to print copies and grade and create lesson plans. Um, I was showing up hours early and staying for, you know, several hours past the end of the school day. Um, like, I pretty much had zero social life at the time. I mean, I, I still have no social life, but, you know, at least now it's more intentional and self-inflicted, you know? Like, I'm married, I'm good, I don't need social life. <laughs> um, but the point, the point there is that there was no work-life balance. All I had was work. That was 
pretty much it. Like, I played video games occasionally, but I barely even had time for that. And that happens to a lot of teachers. It happens to a lot of people, young people, starting out in a career. And it's the reason why so many quit after their first year of teaching. Um, you know, I know I nearly did multiple times <laughs> for the first couple of years. I nearly quit. Um, you know, and I know for students, that's why as a student uh, going to school, why sometimes it can feel very overwhelming and you want to just like quit and give up because there is no balance there, right? It feels like it's just at all work all the time. Um, now, luckily uh, for myself, after a few years, I actually ended up leaving that first campus and ended up at a new one, new campus and new department head. And my new department head, she gave me a simple but amazing piece of advice. She said, when you go home, don't do work. <laughs> like, don't even think about it. Only do the work when you're actually there at your job, when it's like the nine to five, the time you are supposed to be there doing your job. And, you know, surprise, surprise, that actually has helped a lot. Um, granted, I don't always follow that, but now my work-life balance is a lot better. I'm a lot happier overall. And so that's just the kind of solution I'm trying to offer here. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should just ignore your job, neglect the important things, don't even care. Right? I'm not saying that. Um, and like, especially depending on your situation, you might simply not be able to just turn off from work entirely, right? There might be someone listening to this who isn't in the place financially where you're able to do that. Um, and even though I'm saying this and suggesting it, I know that sometimes when I come home, my mind still wanders and thinks about the next day, you know, how things went that day, and it doesn't completely turn off of work, right? And it's really important, though, that when you leave, you need to be able to relax and find something to do that makes you happy. Um, like, for example, for me, uh, coming home, playing video games, or baking cookies, um, playing board games with my wife, or just, you know, playing with our cats, right? That helps me to relax after a stressful day. Um, maybe you like to craft or maybe you just like watching like old noir movies or something like that. I don't know. Um, the point is, right, you want to just make sure that you find something positive to do when you are away from your career. Um, and that applies to students too. Like you guys are really young. Don't focus on school 100% of the time right? Like, you're still so young, figure out something that makes you happy, whatever that happens to be, as long as it's, you know, positive. Um, and in all honesty, when you do find something that makes you happy, that will actually make you better at your job, too. Um, I know that I come into my job, I come into my classroom differently if I've had a really nice and relaxing time the night before. Um, like, if I was just playing some video games, or if I was just getting to watch a TV show or something, right? Versus if I was spending that whole last night stressed out about work, right? I come into my room differently. Um, taking that time for yourself can actually make you more effective, which in turn tends to also have its own positive effect, right? Like, especially if you care about the job and you notice that you're doing a better job of it, you'll tend to be happier. It's sort of like a, a cycle, right? You do better, you make yourself happy, and that kind of continues to fuel into things. Like overall, you're just going to be happier probably. Um, but if all you focus on is work, 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 <laughs> um, then ultimately you're probably going to be miserable and hate every bit of it. Um, so what I would suggest, like if you are financially able or in a situation that allows you to, is don't do work when you're at home or when the clock says you no longer need to be working, right? Like this last year, a lot of us were working from home, right? Or we were, you know, if you're a student, you were learning from home. And that just about killed work-life balance because it's always easier to separate things when your work and home are two very different physical locations. But when both are the same place, I mean, oof, it gets, it gets hard, almost impossible. Um, it was really hard. It's really hard this last year, you know, trying to separate those things when you're having to work and play, so to speak, in the same location. Um, so what I would really strongly urge you to do is to try and separate them. If you're still in a situation where you're being having to be remote like that, try to separate them. Even if it's just like, okay, uh, it's five o'clock now, 
time to watch some TV, right? Even if you just kind of have to tell yourself, okay, it's it. I don't have to be doing things. Now I can do something else. I can read a book or, you know, just have some fun, right? You know, that can make a world of a difference. Um, the point, the point of this is not to shame anyone, right? Um, who has an unhealthy work balance or I'm not trying to suggest that, oh, you're doing the wrong thing if you work all the time, right? Like people have different things that makes them happy, right? I'm just trying to, I guess, start a conversation and hopefully provide some advice that can help someone. Like hopefully someone listening to this has gotten something out of this. I don't know. Um, if you have a differing opinion or any sort of question, like feel free to leave a comment, right? Um, in the little comment section down below right there, right? I would love to hear what you think. Uh, that's kind of all I've got, honestly. <laughs> um, so thank you for watching. Um, if you like the video, please feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you want. Um, I promise there will be more content kind of like this in the future, more commentaries. Um, so yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you want to listen to me talk and potentially have fun or maybe engaging backgrounds. We'll see. We'll see how that all goes. <laughs> um, but in any case, have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. And as always, don't get arrested.